It's Friday again and today I'm going to share with you my three favorite custom settings that I use all the time when I'm out doing wildlife photography. And especially when I'm shooting with these heavy lenses, it's so helpful. And I'm sure it'll benefit a lot of you out there if you don't already know these three tricks. So let's get started with Photographer's Friday. When I'm out doing wildlife photography, it's so important to me that I can have my full concentration on the animal or the subject I'm photographing. Meaning that the more time I can have my eye in the viewfinder and my finger on the release button, the bigger the chance that I actually capture that single moment that makes a difference between a good picture and a really good picture. Because we all know that it's like just these small moments where the light changes or like the animal does something unexpected. That is when we want to be ready with the eye in the viewfinder and our finger on the release button. So the three tips I'm going to share with you now is some custom settings that I always use. And now I'm sitting with a Nikon here. I've also shot with other model of Nikon. I've shot with Canon, I have shot with uh, Sony. And like I always find a way to like set up the camera to achieve uh, the principle I'm going to share with you now. One of the most important thing for me is that I can keep my left hand on the lens so I can handle the zoom ring or the focus ring if I have a focus ring. The first tip is to customize the preview button because I have now to take it down to press the play button to see the, the image. And that just doesn't work because if something happened now, I have to take it back up, find where the animal is and everything is gone. So the first thing I do is I go into the menu and to the custom setting menu, controls, and in controls, I go to the custom controls assignment. And here I go to the function two button. It might be different on your camera. And then I set the function two button to be playback. Voila. That means now that I can still use the play button. When that custom setting is made, that means that I can like keep my eye on the subject and I can press the button down here and that means I can watch and check the image on the back of the screen without moving this. Setting number two is like a kind of extension of setting number one because sometimes I want to go in and check if the image is actually sharp. So what I do is like I go to the menu, again I go to controls, I go to multi-selector center button and on playback mode I set that to zoom on off and then to a hun one like a hundred percent magnification that means that it goes one to one that I can like really check the sharpness so with that done I can now I can now preview the image and press the center of the multi-selector here and that means I go to a hundred percent it's also very helpful when I have the histogram and I press, I zoom in and I can actually see the histogram for that little area. That means like I can go to the snow and see exactly where the snow is. So that's pretty helpful. Setting number three is not really a custom setting, but it's like something I use all the time. I use auto ISO a lot and like I know some of you might think like, oh, a professional wildlife photographer doesn't use auto ISO and that's what I sometimes get in my comment. But for me, it's not about what I use, it's about the picture I get. So I do use auto ISO a lot on this camera and I'm going to share with you in a later video why I do it. But for now, I want to like show you how I do that change very fast because very often I find myself in a situation where I'm shooting 100% manual, something happened, light changes and I just don't have the time to do the adjustment and then I just switch to auto ISO. To change from manual ISO to auto ISO, I simply, instead of pressing the ISO and use the thumb to change the ISO, I just use this finger and to turn this deal and that switches auto ISO on and off and that's really, really helpful because I can do all this when I'm still looking through the viewfinder. 
So I really hope that you could use these uh, tips for your own photography and your camera model might not support the, the, it exactly the way I do or maybe you cannot change the auto ISO the way I do. Maybe you need to configure the buttons a little different if you're using Canon and stuff like that. But like even when I'm shooting with a Canon, I managed to set it up just slightly different and like if you find settings that works better for you on your camera model please share them in the comments because i know that a lot of us will benefit from it and uh, yeah that was basically it please subscribe if you haven't already and then see you next time